Hi, this is Eli Kranzberg, and welcome to this series on the new Logic Pro X 10.3 update. Now, in this first video, the first thing you're going to notice are some graphic changes. So let's look at what's new. First big thing is you'll notice some grayscale in the background here. We can now customize the background in the tracks area. And I'm going to open up the preferences. And when we go to general, and you'll notice that the buttons all have a new look here as well. Under display and tracks area, we have a choice for background between dark, which is the old background we're used to, a bright one, or we can customize. That's the good news. The bad news is it's all grayscale. So it's not full color, but we can customize the background. Now, related to that, we have the grid lines when we're showing them in the tracks area. We can customize their shading here. So I can go to automatic, which is a default shading, or you'll see the horizontal lines get darker. Notice them here underneath the open preferences window here. And vertical, meaning these lines over here, can be customized in terms of grayscale, white for vertical and black for horizontal, or we just go with automatic. Another really nice graphic enhancement is we now have a ghost waveform display in the audio regions when we're editing their lengths. So for example, here's some audio regions. And as I drag the boundary, you'll see that we have shaded the part of the audio file that's not being shown in this current region. So that's a really useful editing tool in that we can see what's coming up ahead. Like if I know I want to edit, let's say to that transient there, I can go and release the mouse by seeing exactly where it is. I can pinpoint my region trimming a lot more accurately. So that's a really nice feature. Now, another graphic enhancement is in the control bar. Any button on the control bar that has a shortcut menu is now going to have a little drop down triangle when you hover the mouse over it. So you see that there. And that's a visual indicator to let you know that there are more functions underneath these buttons. So the way to access them is either to do a long click, and that'll reveal the menu of options, or do a control click, or do a right click. But if you just do a short click, it's just going to invoke the function of the button. So that has it, that has it. There's a new color here for the cycle bar when it's on. You'll see it's another nice graphic enhancement. So again, short click will just invoke the button on or off. Long click will reveal the menu or right click or control click. And while we're up here in the control bar, the gear icon in the control bar that's used to change time formats has been moved to the right instead of the left. So instead of it being here, we have it at the end here with this drop down triangle. So we used to see a gear icon. Now we see this. Now, another nice new graphic enhancement is metronome icon animation. When this is on, you'll see the pendulum actually swing back and forth depending on what beat of the bar the playhead is at. And when you stop it, it'll stop at the location based on the beat. Now, we also have an extra row of colors in the color palette. I'm going to hit Option C to open it up. And instead of three horizontal rows, we now have a fourth horizontal row. There's not a huge variety of additional colors, but it's a step in the right direction by offering more. So that's an additional row of colors. Now we also have horizontal auto zoom. In addition to the vertical auto zoom that was already in the previous Logic version, we can auto zoom horizontally to fit the project contents. And that's the vertical one. We also have this available in the other editors. For example, I'll open the piano roll editor, and now we have horizontal zoom there. And we have it in the step editor as well. Here I've got both the vertical and horizontal zoom. And if we go to the audio editor, I'll select a region here, we'll see that we have the horizontal zoom there as well. And here we're viewing the entire region here already. And right next to it, we have the vertical zoom to zoom the waveform in where we get a slider. But that's been there already. Now, another nice enhancement is in the piano roll editor. When we're playing notes, we can actually see the notes triggered on the keyboard here. So let's look at a quick summary of these new enhancements. We now have grayscale options in the tracks area that are available in the preferences in the display tab the tracks area. And we can also customize the grid lines in that same location. We have ghost waveform editing of audio regions. Same thing with MIDI regions. We can see what's before or ahead when we're dragging regions with additional data in it. And in the control bar, any button on the control bar that has a shortcut menu now has a little downward pointing triangle as a hint that there are additional functions and we can right click on it 
or control click or long click. The gear icon in the control bar to change the time formats has been moved to the right instead of the left, and it's now a downward pointing triangle instead of the gear icon. There's a new metronome icon animation and new graphic display for when we're resizing the cycle region using the shift key. There's an extra row of colors in the color palette, and we have additional horizontal zoom now available in the audio track editor, piano roll, and step editor. And there's also vertical zoom now available in the step editor. And as well in the piano roll, we can now see which notes are being triggered live in real time on the piano roll keyboard that's on the left. See you for more in the next video.